SpaceX, more formally known as Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, is a privately held rocket and spacecraft company that Elon Musk founded in 2002. SpaceX desires to create a global broadband network. That is why Starlink was born. So far, SpaceX provides internet access coverage to 48 countries. It also aims for global mobile phone services after 2023. But before that, Elon Musk wants to seemingly deploy spy satellites. The project in question is called Starshield. <laughs> yeah. So what is it? How does it work? Is it some kind of all-seeing artillery weapon? And how will the system keep Russian and Chinese forces in check? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Launched to great fanfare in October of 2020, Elon Musk's ambitious system for affordable high-speed broadband satellite internet has grown to a user base of 1 million subscribers in just over two years. The SpaceX Satellite Development Facility in Redmond, Washington houses the Starlink Research Development Manufacturing and Orbit Control teams. The cost of the decade-long project to design, build, and deploy the Constellation was estimated by SpaceX in May of 2018 to be at least 10 billion US dollars. SpaceX expects more than $30 billion in revenue by 2025 from its satellite constellation, while revenues from its launch business were expected to reach $5 billion in the same year. More importantly, created as a means of providing fast internet service to rural customers, Starlink has proven itself useful to the military. In Ukraine, Starlink satellites in orbit and Starlink terminals on the ground have for several months shored up communications for the Ukrainian army as it fends off attacks from Russia. Ukrainian drones have relied on Starlink to drop bombs on Russian forward positions. People in besieged cities near the Russian border have stayed in touch with loved ones via the encrypted satellites. The Ukrainian troops who held out in the Azvostal steel plant in Mariupol were able to maintain contact with their commanders and even Zelensky and conduct live video interviews with journalists because they had a Starlink system in the besieged factory. The Russian military was trying to jam Starlink's satellite communications with the Tirada 2S electronic jamming device, but experts said mission impossible. Moscow could obliterate a handful of Starlink satellites, but not thousands. The only way it could achieve this was through directed energy weapons, or DEWs, or otherwise known as anti-satellite missions, for which satellites would have to be launched into space. This brings us to Musk's media interactions in which he stated that it would be challenging to take out the satellites. If you attempt to take out Starlink, this is not easy because there are 2,000 satellites, he said. He added, that means a lot of anti-satellite mission. I hope we do not have to put this to the test, but I think we can launch satellites faster than they can launch anti-satellite missiles. This is more than just a worry for Russia. Russia's ally, China, also has concerns about Starlink. In simulation drills, Chinese military scientists used a nuclear anti-satellite weapon to destroy satellites in near-Earth orbit, like the Starlink satellites belonging to Elon Musk's SpaceX, per the report by the South China Morning Post. The findings by the researchers suggest that a 10 megaton warhead could create a severe threat to satellites if detonated at an altitude of 80 kilometers. Such a nuclear blast is expected to turn air molecules into radioactive particles and produce a cloud with a shape similar to an upside down pear. In five minutes, this cloud could rise to an altitude of nearly 500 kilometers and expand over an area exceeding 140,000 square kilometers. The strong residual radiation of the debris cloud may cause failures of spacecraft moving in it, such as satellites or even cause direct damage that can lead to destruction, the researchers said. Such a nuclear anti-satellite weapon would allow the People's Liberation Army, or PLA, to cripple or destroy Starlink satellites positioned in low Earth orbit, which has long been a concern for Chinese military planners. In May of 2022, the official newspaper of the Chinese Armed Forces also raised concerns about the risks associated with the Starlink satellite internet system, suggesting the 
U.S. military could use it to dominate outer space. SpaceX has decided to increase the number of Starlink satellites from 12,000 to 42,000. The program's unchecked expansion with the company's ambition to use it for military purposes should put the international community on high alert, said the article on China Military Online, the official news website affiliated with the Central Military Commission, or CMC, which is China's highest national defense organization headed by President Xi Jinping. The article also noted Starlink's role during the Russian-Ukraine war, where Elon Musk provided Starlink terminals to restore communications in those parts of the country where internet or phone connection had stopped following the shelling by Russian troops. In addition to supporting communication, Starlink, as experts estimated, could interact with UAVs, or unmanned aerial vehicles, and use big data and facial recognition technology. Might have already played a part in Ukraine's military operations against Russia, said the China Military Online article. The China Military Online commentary also listed numerous instances since 2019 when Starlink cooperated with the U.S. military, including the successful data transmission test conducted by the U.S. Air Force on March 31st of 2022. Fortunately, China and Russia couldn't have imagined that there's another side to having to fend off cyber attacks. Instead of hindering SpaceX's growth, they have instead provided experience in the cybersecurity division at SpaceX. And now, SpaceX intends to parlay that experience into creating a new military-grade Starlink service. Starshield. The change from Starlink to Starshield is not just a change of name. The most obvious difference between Starlink and Starshield is that Starlink was originally designed for commercial services, while Starshield is designed to serve the U.S. government and U.S. national security. In fact, it serves the U.S. Department of Defense. Specifically, it serves the U.S. intelligence collection reconnaissance and even global strike systems. Compared to Starlink, Starshield has higher specifications and more complex functions. It will bring great convenience to the U.S. in terms of reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and combating opponents. But this is definitely not good news for the whole world, and it is worth close attention. According to SpaceX's official website, Starshield will provide the U.S. military with Earth observation, communication, and hosted payload services. First, it can conduct a detailed reconnaissance of the target country. Second, it can also carry out cryptographic communication. That is, it can intercept, it can inter intercept all communication methods of the other party while protecting its own communication system from being intercepted. Third, after the Starlink system is upgraded to Starshield, it can effectively manage nuclear weapons and nuclear warheads orbiting the Earth at high speed. According to the U.S. space version of the Heartland Theory, whoever controls the Earth's orbit controls the near-Earth space, and whoever controls the near-Earth space controls the Earth. The Starshield program has accelerated the militarization of low-orbit satellites. It exposes the U.S.'s eagerness to seize outer space orbital resources and its ambition to sub vert the existing combat system. Vladimir Yermakov, director of the Department for Nonproliferation and Arms Control of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, recently revealed, recently revealed that the U.S. Department of Defense is using a constellation of low-orbit satellites to test a military command system that can cover anywhere in the world, but most countries lack effective countermeasures. From Starlink to Starshield, people can clearly see that the U.S. is trying to build a unilateral space military advantage. The distance itself from its opponents to achieve a dimension reduction strike. The Starshield system would bring new challenges to global security and strategic balance. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, my team and I will see you next time.